If you're new or new-ish to EC2 and AWS, the pricing can be a little bit hard to wrap your head around. There's on-demand and savings plans and reserved instances and spot instances, and some pricing for EC2 instances versus other computing services and so on. So in this video, I'll give you a side-by-side -side comparison of all of them, and then we'll go out to the AWS console and see how you would work with them. Okay, let's start with the on-demand pricing. This is your default option. If you've just created an account and you're playing around with your EC2 instances, this is what you're using. With this, you pay as you use it. There's no upfront commitment, but this is the most expensive option versus some of the others we'll talk about, but good for general use and just trying things out. Very flexible and easy to work with. Next, we have spot instances. Here you bid on the excess capacity that AWS has. I once heard an analogy of an airline giving discounts on their spots or their seats that were left on a plane. So it's kind of the same idea, a spot instance. AWS has machines that are just sitting idle occasionally, so they might as well use them. This is the least expensive option of everything here on the slide, giving you up to 90% savings versus the on-demand pricing. But it's important to know that your instances can be terminated at any time. So you should only use this for workloads that are interruptible, maybe some kind of data processing job that can be done over weeks or months. And you need to make sure your app is architected to handle that shutdown. Next, we have reserved instances. Here you make a commitment of one to three years saying, here's how much capacity we need. And you get a discount for that commitment. Kind of like leasing an apartment, you're usually gonna get a discount for a year long commitment versus going month to month. So you reserve these. These can give you a savings of 30 to 60% compared to on-demand, and they're good for steady known workloads. But the catch here is that you pay for this even if you don't use it. So up front, if you say, okay, we're gonna need X capacity, and you don't use all of that, you're still locked into paying for it. AWS is actually kind of steering people away from these, though you can still use them. Instead, they're pointing you to the savings plan, which is our final option here. And this is kind of meant to bring together the best of all options. Here you again have that one to three year commitment and you get discounted pricing. Anything beyond that, you do pay on demand prices, but still you're gonna get a discount here. This is also good for steady workloads, but you have more flexibility than with the reserved instances. And that's why it was introduced a few years back. But if these last two columns still seem very similar to you, then let's look at another side-by-side -side comparison of the reserved instances versus savings plans. So the big difference here is that with a reserved instance, you're committing to a specific instance type at a specific price over a specific time period. So not super flexible. Again, you're on the hook for paying for it, even if you don't use things, though you could sell things on the marketplace to try to recoup some of that cost. These are billed by the hour, and there are three payment options, all upfront, partial upfront, or no upfront. And when you reach your commitment, the on-demand pricing will kick in. So over to savings plans, here the flexibility comes in that you're committing to a specific dollar amount over a specific time period, but you're not tied into a specific instance type. You've got flexibility on that type, and you can also use a savings plan for other compute services, including Fargate and Lambda. This is also billed by the hour, similar payment options, and when your commitment is reached, you do also go back to on-demand pricing. Drilling into savings plans a little bit more here, we've got the EC2 instance savings plan, which as the name implies, applies only to EC2. Here you do get discounts up to 72%, but again, because it only applies to this one service, you don't have a ton of flexibility for other compute options. And then there's the compute savings plan, which applies to multiple compute services. So EC2, Lambda, and Fargate, giving much more flexibility, discounts up to 66%. And then for completeness, there is a SageMaker savings plan as well, if you're working with machine learning instances. And this will give you savings up to 64%. Okay, with that theory out of the way, let's go see how you would work with these in the AWS console. I'll navigate to EC2. And we'll start by taking a look at spot instances. There are a couple ways you can make a request for these, but I'm actually just going to go through and act like I'm creating a brand new instance, saying launch instance. 
Then you would start by filling out the details of your instance, choosing your OS, instance type, networking, and so on. But you want to scroll all the way down here to advanced details. And this is where you can get into the spot instance details. So scrolling down to purchasing option, you would say request spot instances. So basically, I want to bid on excess capacity for a machine that looks like what I just configured up above. With this selected, you'll come over here and hit Customize and fill in additional details. So you can set the maximum price that you want to pay for this. If you say no maximum, then it'll cap it at the on-demand price. Or you can set your own. The request type. If you select one time, then after the instance is terminated, then you're done. Or if you select Persistent, that means a new one will spin up when a previous one is terminated. You can set the date that this request should expire. Interruption behavior, what should happen when the instance is interrupted? Should we hibernate, stop, or terminate? If you've got a one-time request, then terminate is the only valid option here. And that's basically what you need to fill out. So you would go through, fill out any additional details below that you need, and then launch your instance. But note, this is only a request for an instance until capacity is available. So it won't actually launch an instance until that time. But if I were to click this button, I can then see the request over here under Spot Requests. And here's where I could manage the requests. Now, it's important to know that if you don't need instances anymore, you want to delete this request. But otherwise, new instances will keep spinning up as capacity is available. If you have an instance that's currently running, you want to delete this request and then delete the instance. If you delete the instance without deleting the request first, the request will keep spinning up new instances for you, so potentially an expensive oversight. But those are the basics of getting set up with a spot request or spot instance. We've also got reserved instances, so over here on the left as well. And you'll notice up here on the top a message that says we recommend savings plans over reserved instances. For some of those reasons that we've already discussed, there's more flexibility. You can apply it to more things like Lambda and Fargate and so on. So I won't spend too much time here, but you could still purchase a reserved instance if you had a good reason to. You would pick the different details. So let's say we want a Linux instance, T3 Micro. We just go 1 to 12 months. Payment option partial upfront, and then we'll say search. And this will search for instances available that match our criteria. Looks like we have some. You can see the details here. And then you would add it to your cart and then go through a checkout process. So those are reserved instances. And then for savings plans, you can also start those over here on the left. And you see some additional details about what these are. But if you click on purchase savings plans, You'll see this actually takes you to billing and cost management. So we're not in the EC2 console anymore. This is more about billing. But again, more details about what the options are, like we've covered. You would purchase a savings plan, pick the one you want, set your term, one year or three year, the hourly commitment you're making, payment option, all upfront, partial upfront, or no upfront, and then add to cart but reiterating on this one that you're committing to a spend, not a particular instance type. So more flexibility, like we said. And that does it. Those are the different types of pricing models available for EC2. If you found this helpful, give me a thumbs up. Also think about subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Thanks so much for watching.